<laughs> Yo, I feel like it's deja vu. I feel like I was just doing this with the other filter for this lens a couple vlogs ago. It's kind of wild, but it just proves how important what's in this box is to me. I need a knife, yo. Pete, send me one. All right, a couple months ago, I uploaded a vlog, and at the beginning of that vlog, I was unboxing Tiffin Black Promus, right? <laughs> and a lot of people were asking me like, yo, like, why don't you do Promus in post? <laughs> you could do Promus in post, you can kind of bloom the highlights in post. That tends to look like complete garbage, <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm being completely honest with you. Like sometimes you can get it good and sometimes you can get it right, but most of the time, it just doesn't look as good as Pro Mist inside of camera. Like 95% of things you see from me, I'm using Pro Mist. I just like the way it rolls off the highlights, it tends to smooth out skin, things like this window right here, this lamp back here, they just bloom so nicely, it looks soft. I'm into softer looking images. I like sharpness, yes, but I like smooth a lot more than sharpness, if I'm being completely honest with you. All right, now this, this is the Base Camp by Polar Pro. Thank you for sending me this. I need this because I use a 20 millimeter lens on my C200 and that doesn't have a filter thread on the end of it. So I'm unable to attach any sort of Tiffin Black Pro Mist or any screw on filter for that matter. And the good thing about the Base Camp is you get these clamps right here that can go on pretty much all your lenses. And then when it's time for you to use a filter like Pro Mist or Variable ND or some of the other stylistic filters that they have, like the anamorphic streaks, the blue streaks, and all that stuff like that, you can just have one filter for every single lens and you don't even need step up rings. You just have these clamps. I was gonna be selling my 20 millimeter a couple weeks ago. I saw this and I'm like, yo, this solves all my problems. Then I don't need all these different filters to go on all of these different lenses. I'm gonna set this up, put it on my C200, and then I'm gonna film a video for YouTube. It'll be out. break down like my philosophy and how I approach lighting my YouTube videos and just lighting in general. Uh, if I'm lighting a scene, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to, well, obviously first I'm gonna set up my, my angle and <laughs> my frame first. So that's what I did, I set up my frame, I got my frame perfectly how I wanted it with everything in the background exactly how I needed it to look. And from there, I turn off all of my artificial lighting. So I'm just gonna light the scene for the window and the lamp. The cool thing about the lamp is it's by LifeX, so I can I can lower the intensity on my phone um, via Wi-Fi if I want this lamp to be a little bit lower in intensity. And I don't want this to be super bloomed. I always lower the intensity of my lamp in the background. I feel it kind of takes away some of the um, attention on myself in the frame, but ironically, I have this window open. <laughs> but I have this window open because I want the ambience in the room to be a little bit brighter. If I close this off, it would be totally black behind me, which I don't want. I kind of want it to feel like natural. All right, so I expose for just the overall ambience in the room without any artificial lighting, and then I bring in my key light. And the reason that I do this is if I expose for the overall ambience and get that to where I need it to be, when I bring in the light afterwards, I can lower the intensity of the light as opposed to me bringing in the light first and having the intensity of it all the way up and trying to get the lowest possible ISO value. <laughs> Not really too, you know, uh, focused on not having grain. Grain's cool, like grain's fine to me. All right. I just want the light to be as soft as possible. So if I up the intensity of the light super high and then I adjust my ISO for that before I expose for the ambience in the room, then the image is gonna be super contrasting, which I don't want. So I expose for the ambience, then I bring in my key light and then by doing that, I'm able to have the key light a little bit softer and have the roll off with the key light on my skin to look better. So I expose for the key, then I bring in the kicker, um, and you, that's, that's not really doing too much, but it looks natural. It looks like the light's coming from that window and it land back there. So that's my philosophy on lighting. I expose for the scene first, then I bring in my key light, and then I bring in my hair light. And I usually go for a motivator look as well. I might actually end up switching this key light over to the other side so it looks like all of the light is coming from the window, even though it's obviously not. So I'll try it out and see how that looks. I still gotta sell this lens, unfortunately. This combo, the base camp with the 20 millimeter, it worked, but it was a little janky because the lens hood, <laughs> the lens hood, man, the lens hood made it mad awkward to slide in the filter and pull it out. So I don't know, it just isn't on there as secure as I would like it to be. So I'm gonna just go ahead and sell this lens and pick something up in its place. Something like a 24 millimeter. 
uh, from Sigma. It sucks though. I really like this lens. It's incredible on APS-C and also full frame too. Like I love taking full frame photos from this 20 millimeter. The look is so unique. It's like super wide, but you can also get that shallow depth of field, which is crazy. But yeah, I gotta sell. I just listed it up on Instagram. Um, I doubt that it'll still be available by the time you see this, but who knows? Maybe it'll take a minute to sell or not sell at all. So if you're interested in this, head over to my Instagram and see if I still have the post up for it. You could potentially buy, but I'll hop in this edit real quick. At the beginning of 2021, probably my biggest goal was to stay committed to fitness. It was one time in 2020 at the end where I walked past the mirror in my bathroom and I stopped and I looked back and I'm like, yo, you're getting fat, bro. And ever since that realization of me looking at myself in the mirror, I've been going so hard in the gym. <laughs> and not even just going to the gym. I bought some stuff. I bought some mat to put on my floor. I bought a, a, a bench. I bought a bike. I bought a weight set. My wife and I, we've been going hard. I've been eating right. I've been working out and it's been hard, but it's been fun because I'm not really judging my progress on the metrics of a weight or a scale. I've really been judging my progress in metrics of what I can do. It was a point in time where I couldn't do pull-ups. I remember I could do like two pull-ups maximum. Now, you know, I'm doing upwards of 10 and sets of three and it's it's kind of crazy and it's, it's mad fun and it's interesting to see how my body's transforming and how strong I'm able to do certain things. Um, it's fun, it's fun, man. So 2021, uh, my fitness goal has been, it's been on the right track. And this is a slight flex too, it should be. I'm excited and I'm happy to see the progress in my body and myself. Um, and hopefully this can motivate you all to get into some sort of steady fitness, if that's your goal. Ah. Hair probably look crazy as hell, but look, when I take these out, my fro gonna be flourishing, I'm telling you. <laughs> it's crazy how tiny, it makes you look like you have no hair, but right. you have a ton of hair. <laughs> Yo, I'm getting all my hair back. We gonna go get some food though. Nanny's in town. Y'all know, y'all know who Nanny is. I don't know why I'm saying Nanny. Her mom is in town, and I want to get out of the house. I feel like I'm so cooped up in the house all the time. But the reason I'm cooped up in the house all the time is that I do not like driving here in Atlanta. It's like one of the worst experiences in the world for me personally. I get anxiety. People drive like freaking maniacs, and then it's just traffic. It's, it's crazy. Yesterday I went to the barbershop, right? And I left uh, an entire hour before I needed to be there. And I got there 30 minutes late. <laughs> like, yo, the traffic in Atlanta is crazy, yo. It's, 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 it's freaking wild. Yo, the key to cheat meals is to pick out. You gotta get absolutely sick. So you never, ever want to eat whatever you gotta get. Yo, all 2021, I've been waking up at 5 a.m. for one reason or another. I plan to make an entire video about my schedule that I chose and why I chose it, but <laughs> that's really irrelevant to what I'm trying to say right now. I've been waking up at 5 a.m. all year and I haven't watched the sunrise once. So that's the mission right now, that's the goal. The only thing is, I don't know where to watch a good sunrise, so. I'm just out right now, I'm using the Sunseeker app on my phone and I'm trying to find wherever the sun is and we're just gonna head there and try to see something, try to find something that looks cool. So we'll see what we find, but it feels good to just be out, man. There's nobody out here right now. It's cool, crisp morning air. <laughs> Can't complain at all. Yo, I think I found the spot, yo. Check this, check this. Focus, oh, up there is the city. 
then we got like a little lake right here with a nice reflection. It's not the direct sun, which I wish I could see. I'm looking in that direction and it's just a bunch of trees, so it's not gonna be that interesting, but I think this would be dope. Um, just to chill, just to watch the sunrise. I like doing stuff like this because regardless if I put this in this vlog or not, <laughs> it's serene and it's cool for me to just be here and, and, and out in the open. It's not a lot going on. You got nature. This is dope. <laughs> I need to come out and do this a lot more often. I always work through the morning and this reason why I do that, you know, it's beneficial as well, but I do want to get out here every now and then and just come out and watch the sunrise, man. Rarely get out and do stuff like this. follow me on Instagram go follow me on Instagram right now if you aren't already <laughs> but every time I go live on Instagram every time like not even no BS it's somebody asking me yo when you bring the director gear back when you bring it back to director merch <laughs> soon <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm lining up a drop right now but I just got some samples in that I kind of want to preview and just show my first reaction of looking at the stuff with you guys uh, the first of which was the artwork right here on the walls which looks dope i'm actually really digging this uh i'm thinking i'm gonna sell this as a set just for people who want to get like three pieces in a set to hang up behind their desk or in their office or wherever they want um but y'all let me know what y'all think about that but i got some other stuff here too that i kind of want to preview with you guys um we in a pandemic so you already know we got to do some masks boom mm. This is actually a really quality mask too. I don't know if y'all can read that scrunched up like that, but this is the spring drop, the spring artwork for the director gear. You can see that. This is a really quality mask too, I can't lie. They got like the adjustments over here on the side of it. It is a really quality mask, yo. This is dope. So this is my rendition of the mask right here with the director across. Looks dope. You know, y'all wanna be swagging, y'all wanna be styling while y'all being safe. <laughs> this is it and this is a uh, quality print on here as well it's not like something that's gonna rub off at all so that's dope we got the masks we got the artwork and then we got like the actual clothes now given this is a a spring drop you know this is a spring drop it's not I don't want to do like something super heavy like I'm not trying to release a coat because you know by the time y'all get ready to rock this is gonna be warming up so I kind of wanted to meet right in the middle and I think I got there perfectly and this looks fire yo I'm so excited about the way this looks check this Ooh. focus oh look at that nice embroidery across the chest on that director oh I'm so hyped yo so this right here is a pullover like windbreaker I'm gonna throw this on real quick just so y'all can see it. I got the champion, uh, got the got the champion embroidery right there on the sleeve. Ooh! Hoo -hoo. Oh, this hard. Oh, this is hard, bro. Oh my god, this is tough. So we got the director right here. Let me focus on this dag on chest and keep on grabbing my eye. Got the director right here on the chest, embroidered, nice black and white, all black pullover, windbreaker. Also got the adjustments right here, the string adjustments right here, so you can kinda, you know, scrunch it up at the bottom if you went to that. This is hard, bro. Damn, this is dope as hell, bro. Ooh, I'm hyped. This is so tough, y'all. You got the little drawstrings right here that you can adjust. 
Go over the hood if you want to, you know. Oh, you can scrunch that joint up. So look, on them, on, them, on them spring days where it's, you know, it's a little warm, but it's a little cool at the same time. You want to block out that wind. This going to be the play. So that's hard. That's dope as hell. I am, shh. man, this, this is dope, yo. Know? The whole, the whole drop is looking fire so far. And then we got one more piece too. So, you know, I'm a fan of hoodies. I love hoodies. I wear hoodies every single day. I'm a person who's always cold. So if I'm traveling, you know, I'm always throwing a hoodie on, dog. Like I got to, I got to. So we got, we got the hoodie too. We got the hoodie for my, for my hoodie folks. And the hoodie's dope too. Check it, check it. Man, focus on this and not my head. We got the, Director across the chest. Let me tap on this because this will never let my eye go. <laughs> Got the director across the chest on the hoodie, which is dope too. This is a nice quality too, man. We got like the quality drawstrings right here. Um, my autofocus is all over the place because I, I I put on tracking. It's just locking on my eye, but this is like a really good quality. So this is the director hoodie right here. Quality is incredible. This hoodie's a little snug, so you might want to size up whenever we do drop these. I might test some other materials as well whenever we do end up dropping these. But this is a medium, so it's kind of snug on me. I would like this to be a little less snug, but I like it. It's quality, it's real thick, um, and it's warm as well. So that's all I wanted to show y'all. We got the mask, the artwork. My favorite of which is the Windbreaker. The Windbreaker is crazy. Uh, and then you can never really go wrong with the director hoodie too, so. We went with this design, uh, with this drop. It looks a lot more streetwear. It looks almost like a old school rock band style, but you know, you rocking the director and you keeping it stylish at the same time. It's not like just some font across your chest. It's an actual design, so I like that. Um, but that's it, yo. I'ma close this vlog out. I'll make sure to let you guys know when this director merch will be available. If you enjoy it, let me know down in the comments, man, what's your favorite part of this. Um, if you enjoyed this vlog, man, you watched it all the way to this point, you the real MVP. I appreciate you. Drop this video a like. If you're new to the channel, you like random content like this, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm out, y'all. Peace.